Hi, everybody, and welcome to season three of Sage Makeup Fridays, and this is episode number two. My name is Julian. I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And once again, please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Segolen, and I am a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. Uh, my role is to help customers get their ML projects on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you for being with us again. So uh, SageMaker Fridays is a bi-monthly event uh, where we focus on real-life machine learning use cases. Mm -hmm that we try to solve uh, using SageMaker and particularly all the new capabilities that were launched a few months ago at AWS reInvent. All episodes are live, right? Uh, we're in the Paris office again. Um, we don't use any slides. Uh, it's gonna be, as always, 100% discussion and demo. So please ask all your questions uh, in the chat. Uh, we'll uh, try to keep an eye on the on the questions, and we'll try to do a live Q and A for uh, for a change. Uh, we also have uh, colleagues helping us with uh, with answers. So uh, if we don't answer your question, I'm sure someone else yeah. will pick it up. But we'll try to do some live Q and A. Why not? And as always, there are no silly questions. So don't be shy, uh, don't feel embarrassed, ask anything that you like to learn about and make sure you can learn as much as possible about machine learning and, uh, and SageMaker. So uh, today we are talking about data preparation mm -hmm. uh, and we'll focus on a new capability called SageMaker Data, data Wrangler, Wrangler. Okay? Exactly. Uh, which, it's, which is the beginning of the uh, of the machine learning life cycle. So before we dive into uh, into the, the service and the demo, uh, Sego, can you tell us a little bit about data prep? Um, what is what is uh, what is it? What are the, the main things we need to uh, to focus on? Uh, what are some of the pain points? So just based on your experience, you know, what should we what should we know about data preparation? So um, data preparation uh, takes a lot of time for any kind of data scientist. Sometimes it, it can turn out to be a nightmare because you've got like, a, yeah, nightmare. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> no, sometimes because you've got a lot of data and this is very crucial when you start any kind of ML project. You need to understand your data, you need to understand where they come from, and you need to familiarize yourself with your data in order after to do a good ML project. Mm. So data prep, what is it? Most of the time you're going to have some small or bigger um, issue with the data. What does it mean? You need sometimes you need to uh, clean your data. Mm -hmm. You need to feel missing values. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after, sometimes you need to transform as well your data in order to uh, give them a more expressive form okay. and which make it easier uh, for the algorithm to learn. Okay, so and we'll see we'll see some examples, and that, that's what we all call feature engineering. Exactly, yes? feature engineering, which is a, a bit of a mysterious thing. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a big part it's a big part of the job of um, data scientist and uh, ML practitioner because again you fit you create some good feature again mm. in order to have after a good ML model. Okay. Uh, working on your data. Okay, so we're going to see some example of that, uh, maybe cleaning, maybe uh, encoding, maybe dropping columns, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe some columns are you know, full text and we don't really see the, the value. Uh, visualization, I think, is uh, also yes. important. That, yeah, um, it's really, really histograms. important. Histograms. Scatter plot, uh, so many different types of visualization. And after, again, for each kind of data, you're going to have a good, uh, 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 an optimal way of visualization. And after, it is important to try different visualization every time. And because it's help making your data speaking. It's okay. super important. Okay, and and when we have uh, we, we've done our transformations mm -hmm. on the data, uh, and usually that means writing a lot of code or using existing code. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see today that Data Wrangler lets us do all of that without writing any code, mm -hmm. which is great because, as you all know by now, I'm very lazy. <laughs> uh, and I, I'd rather, you know, focus on understanding the problem than writing Python code to encode stuff. Um, 
And so once we've done that, how do we how do we use that uh, again and again and again? Can we can we export the transforms? Can we can we automate? Uh, you know what what are typical steps we want to do there yeah exactly and we are going to see during the demo that um we want we are lazy and we want to of course uh, re, re, reuse uh, the work uh, we have already done so we will see during this demo that there are of course some ways of storing uh, this kind of um, of uh, data pre-processing mm -hmm. and reuse it after on other type of data okay again and again and exactly use, yeah. run it programmatically exactly et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. okay all right, so uh, should we start the demo? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> I know that's what you want to see. Demos. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to see us. You want to see some interesting demos and code. Okay. Let's let's go and uh, share my screen, and uh, and we start uh, once again from uh, SageMaker Studio, um, and from the launcher from the home page, mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see. Um, this thing called new data flow, right? Which is what we want to do. Prepare and visualize data with SageMaker Data Wrangler. Okay. So clicking on this opens this window, right? Mm -hmm. And so you can see the different steps. Uh, of course, we need to import Ross. data. Then we're going to uh, analyze, yeah, prepare data, apply some some transforms. Mm -hmm. uh, we can. Uh, we're going to do some visualization. Uh, and and then once we're kind of happy, <laughs> <laughs> and of course it's a short demo today, uh, we can export it, mm -hmm. uh, and you will see the different options there. Okay, so here uh, I could I could pull data from Athena, but we're going to use uh, everybody's friend, which is <laughs> Amazon S3, right? Simple enough. So we click on this. Uh, make sure your bucket is in the same region as uh, SageMaker Studio, right? Mm -hmm. So you can see on my screen at the top, I'm using uh, the, the Ireland region. So I'm going to go and get my bucket here, which is in the same region. And it has a file called titanic.csv, right? Hopefully that my demo won't be the Titanic demo. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's a well-known toy data set, right? Exactly. Uh, it's a very is. dramatic topic, so <laughs> we got to make it fun, right? Um, and so the, it's the Titanic survivor data set. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so we have information on all the passengers. And as soon as I select this, maybe I could zoom in a little bit, mm -hmm. close this. Um, we see uh, we have a preview of the of the uh, headers. Um, if this was a really, really large data set, um, we could enable sampling or we could just take everything. Everything. Uh, yeah, we could just, we'll just leave sample and enable here. And um, and we can decide which format this is. So uh, obviously this is a CSV data set, but you can also use uh, Parquet data. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Parquet is very good because when you have large data sets, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very efficient columnar format. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that's also supported by uh, Redshift and uh, Athena mm -hmm. and some of our uh, so-called big data services. So you can use those as well. Okay. All right. So the only thing we can do here is import it. So let's do that. Okay. And then we get to uh, the I should say the preparation screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we see uh, our data source. We could have multiple data sources, right? And we're going to use just one for simplicity, but uh, if you had multiple files um, or multiple sources, right, you could you could join them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in the in the SQL sense of the word, right? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and so you can run a you could run a join operation. So if you use Redshift tables, for example, that's a, a really good way. Uh, if you have a reference data in a table and then all your uh, all your uh, actual data in another table, you can pull that in, right? And join, or you can concatenate that's just, really you know, good. put them together, right? Uh, we have uh, we have data types that are automatically uh, detected, okay? So fine, let's just go and see what we can do here. So we could edit data types, mm -hmm. so let's take a look. Uh, and uh, it, you could just check that, uh, uh the the data types for uh for all your columns are mm -hmm. correct so i think they are right uh, looking at this i think the uh we automatically picked up the right uh 
uh, yeah, this is clearly a float. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it looks okay, but you could you could change them and uh, just apply the change. But here, okay, we don't need to do this, so we can go back to the data flow. Um, then probably we want to see what's inside the data set. Okay, so you want to build uh, graphs? Cool. <laughs> okay, let's do that. <laughs> so we add an analysis, and we can see the different types. So histogram, quick models, scatter plot, okay. table summary. summary. Table summary like, looks like a good start. Okay, so we can do this. And I'm going to be very original and call this <laughs> summary. Okay. And we get basic stats, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so the number of uh, uh, the number of values. So we can see actually, we yeah we have some missing values, right? So age mm -hmm. is uh, not completely uh, not completely available for all samples. Cabin is very empty, right? Okay, well we'll worry about that later. And then we can see uh, mean values nice. and yeah, standard deviation and mean and max. Mm. Okay, so a good uh, quick way to uh, to see what's happening there. And we can create this. Okay, and then it's available. Okay, let's let's do another one. But after the, even this kind of very simple uh, table is super important because mm -hmm. you're gonna see, for instance, some data have some uh, high standard deviation. It can give you an idea saying, okay, maybe we need to. Uh, uh, maybe we have an outliers. Yeah, maybe uh, some okay, outliers. Or really, or, really weird values. Exactly. Placeholder some values. And stability of the of this feature. Okay. So it might be a good um, idea and first hypothesis you can okay. test later on your data preparation right. analysis. Okay, so you need to look at the table summary. Right. Um, <laughs> okay, let's try an histogram. And we're going to try and plot uh, survivors, why not? So on the x-axis, we could have survived, I guess. You can see, all right. So we see, uh, yeah. yeah, we see we have about 500 something uh, people who didn't survive and 300 something people who survived, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so, yeah, I guess we can add some color and I'm completely making this up. So uh, let's see what happens there. Really getting to this. Uh, yeah, this isn't so clear because we, we wouldn't have to have a float value. Oh, maybe some um, age? Uh, maybe the age is a good idea, okay. Uh, yeah, not so bad. Okay, all right, all right. We could try something else. Uh, do we have the passenger class? Maybe. Uh, okay. Yeah, these are uh, integer values, so using a float scale here mm -hmm. is not great. Okay. Um, so we could see, you know, we could easily, uh, yeah, we could use facets. We could use, you know, quickly build those mm -hmm. those graphs, um, and. So we have those built-in types, histogram, um, scatter plot, and you can add your own code if you wanted. So I'm not going to do this, but uh, you can actually uh, you can actually run your own code mm -mm. Uh, and uh, and build your own visualization code here. Okay. All right. Um, so there's there's another one that I like, um, which is pretty cool, which is the quick model. Oh. Okay. So. It's exactly what it says. It's it's going to train mm -hmm. in place oh. a, a quick uh, a quick model, uh, and it gives you a sense of uh, the the predictive power that's available in in the data set. And of course, as you run your feature engineering steps, you can say, well, am I actually increasing my metric or not? Okay, so uh, let's so it's go. it's going to be your base, baseline? Okay, yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's a baseline. So I just have to say, here's my label, which okay. is called survived. Remember the zero one thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, it's going to take a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And we should see uh, we should see the an F1 score, I think. And okay. we should see, um, yes, here we are. Okay, so automatically um, a data wrangler figures out this is a classification model mm -hmm. because we have a label that's either, either zero or one. So, of course, it's a binary classification. So we use the F1 score, which is a good uh, mm -hmm. a good Thank measure you. of uh, uh, how well classifiers work. Mm -hmm. One is perfect, zero is not awful. <laughs> <laughs> 0.79 is, is not too bad. 
um, and uh, and we can see feature importance, right? We can see feature importance. So okay, there's probably uh, and and uh, you know oddly enough, we see the name has the as a, as an important feature. So that's probably that's probably not right uh, because it's only strings, right? So. Uh, not sure why this plays an important role, but we see, you know, sex, cabin, uh, ticket, uh, passenger class, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, you have to tilt your head, <laughs> otherwise you can't read. Um, okay, so fine, let's start preparing data, okay? So we can go and uh, move back to the preparation view, and you just want to click at transform, right? Okay, and this is where the good stuff starts, really, because uh, this is where you find all the transforms. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And you have how many? 300 something? 300, I think. Oh, over 300. Um, and if that's not enough, you can always run your own, right? Mm. So you can come and bring your uh, PySpark, Pandas, mm -hmm. PySpark, PySpark SQL right. code. And uh, yeah, I'm zoomed in a little bit too much here, but yeah, the the table itself is just called DF, right? For obviously data frame, so you can just go and say DF blah blah blah, and and run your code in there. Okay, fine. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, at some typical transforms. So let's say uh, you know we want to use uh, eventually we want to train with uh, XJBoost, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Which is a good, uh, good. all round choice, <laughs> right? Everybody loves XJBoost. Um, so XJBoost has one requirement, which is the label needs to be the first column. That's good. Okay, and we see here it's not. We have this passenger ID column, which we probably need to drop anyway. Uh, but let's say okay, we need let's let's put the label in front. So we just go and manage columns, move column, move to start. Or you can move to end, move anywhere, really. But here I want to do this and just say, OK, uh, please move survived to start. I can preview because maybe that's, you know, <laughs> maybe that's not what I wanted to do. It happens to, lot, to me a lot. So, OK, this is really what I want to do. I want to see this column here. And fine, I'm going to add this transform. OK, then we could say hmm, passenger ID, you know, is Are that... It's it's really it's an integer. It, how could this be a feature, right? It's mm -hmm. you know it's just uh, the index of the CSV line. So let's say we remove this. So we're just going to say drop column, passenger ID, preview. <laughs> okay, good. get rid of it. Uh, add P class. Ah, so that that's the that's the passenger class, and you saw the movie, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> If uh, Leonardo had been first class, yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd still be alive today, <laughs> right? Did you cry? Yes, of <laughs> Okay, all right. I didn't. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. You're not romantic. <laughs> no, I'm not very sensitive to those stories. But what I can tell you is, you know, these are not really integers, right? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It, these are really different dimensions. Mm -mm. Okay, so you could say, well, one, two, three, you know, um, there's no sense of scale, right? I mean, third class is not three times first class. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this encoding it doesn't work for me, right? So I'm going to say, well, this is more of a categorical variable. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say... Yeah, uh, please one not encode P class and the output style. So the output style could be either a vector, so an actual vector mm -hmm. with uh, you know uh, zero, zero, zero one values. Zero one. Uh, but personally, I'm I, I prefer to have different columns. Okay, so I'm going to say I want a different column for each, and uh, I'm going to prefix them with uh, P class, and I'm going to say preview. And I see P class one, two, three. Mm -mm. And now I have my three dimensions. That's great. Yeah. Right? So that's what I wanted. I'm going to add this. And I guess I'm going to drop. Yeah, so G class. Yeah, I'm going to draw a P class, right? So go back to manage columns, drop column, P class, 
It's, you... important, it's important to drop the peak class because otherwise, after you can, uh, otherwise you will introduce some multicollinearity of this, of this kind of yeah. stuff. So it's important to uh, yeah. when you do like some feature engineering, you really need to think uh, about what you do at every step because otherwise, after you introduce some bias or some um, uh, noise in your data mm. and some multicollinearity, which is bad. Okay, so I'm going to drop names because uh, you know those are strings. Maybe there is. You know, maybe there is predictive power there. If you have a long name, you died. And if you have a short <laughs> name, you lived. But yeah, I'm not so sure. So I'm going to drop names. Uh, sex is definitely a category. Um, now, XJBoost is actually pretty good at, uh, at this. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have uh, category strings and it kind of picks them up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So let's just leave it like that. Uh, let's take a look at the other columns. So age, we can see we have lots of missing values. Mm -hmm. hmm. So should we try and fill in missing values? Yeah. So handle missing. And what can we do here? We could say we could drop missing. all the lines, mm -hmm. all the rows with missing values, or uh, we could fill them with, you know, maybe, you know, zero, Zero 100 or like a placeholder value, or we could impute. 100. <laughs> uh, we could impute, which really means compute something. So um, let's go and try this because we're just here to have fun. And uh, you could impute the mean or the median. Do you have a favorite here? Um, approximate okay. median. <laughs> yeah, sounds sounds more clever. Okay, uh, let's preview this. Okay, and. Of course, it's it's gonna help, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna add that. Okay, now we have values for uh, uh, the age. Regarding this missing value yes. uh, stuff, it's really important, and uh, because most of the time your data are gonna have, uh, have some missing values, and really it is important to um, have a kind of domain expert uh, knowledge mm. in order to know how to uh, replace your yeah. missing value. Because sometimes for time series data, ah. it won't be the same that okay. for uh, tabular data and so on. So it's super important to think about uh, why you've got these missing values and after how you overcome uh, this. Yeah, and, and that's a very good point. And I think here we just use the median because we're trying to have fun with data. <laughs> uh, it, it's very, I, I think in, in real life, I would try I would try this. I would try to drop all the rows where mm -hmm. I don't have age. I would build both models and, and see which one works best. Mm -hmm. And maybe do ensemble because mm -hmm. why not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. But uh, uh, there is no right or wrong answer. It's really... No. You know, you have to experiment. Exactly. Yeah, um, it's really if you have lots of experience, you could say, well, I think this is going to be better. But at the end of the day, you want to check, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. OK, so I'm going to leave those like that. Uh, tickets. Yeah, I don't know. We have some weird characters. It's not even yeah, it's a string, but it's mostly numbers. So I'm going to act here and drop <laughs> ticket. Ticket numbers, whatever they are. Yes, go away. Fair is probably interesting. Cabin, cabin is mostly empty. Um, I'm pretty sure there's some some value yeah. there, right? Cabin yeah, numbers, but right it's it's left. so empty that, and I don't have a good idea to fill values here. So, yeah, I've got to drop, drop cabins. <laughs> and we still haven't written a line of code, right? Uh, embarked is kind of a string. And so again, it's a kind of category. The really important uh, and the, the value uh, bring, bring in, uh, brought by uh, Data Wrangler because all the things we are currently doing normally is like uh, lines of code, etc. Yes. And here it's just like you play with the UI and um, you don't lose yourself in lines of code. And I yeah, see well, the way I would do it without the way I used to do it before Data Wrangler was just like everybody, I would copy paste from Stack yeah. Overflow <laughs> or copy paste from old it's, notebooks uh, that yeah. I had or, and yeah, why not? But 
you know, I'm trusting that th- this list of of transforms is based on code that works, mm-hmm. and, uh, and I'm I'm not so interested in writing the Python code that you know removes outliers. I'm really interested in okay, uh, if I see outliers in there, I want to get rid of them and just move on to the next task, right? And I think it's super important for a new joiner for machine learning because all this transformation, it's really uh, in reality the core of the machine mm-hmm. the data prepa- uh, preparation process, and it's super important and super interesting to have all this transformation in one place and after you can sure. uh, play with that and keep uh, understanding what's happened. Okay, let's do a couple more. Uh, we have numerical values. Maybe we should normalize. Why not? Why okay, not? we want to show you how to do this. Uh, so how do we do this? Do we have normalization in there? Process numeric? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, scale value, standard scalar, min max. Oh yeah, for some reason I, I love min max. <laughs> and I'm gonna transform H between zero and one, right? And again, this is probably not needed because XGBoost kind of you know knows how to deal with this. And now I should do fair as well. Otherwise. But for instance, if standardization might be interesting for data where you've got like a high dispersion yes. or a high standard deviation, in, in this case, you decrease the kind of uh, volatility. Yeah. yeah, here, the scale of those two mm. uh, features are is not so different, but yeah, okay, let's go into this one anyway. All right, so just, just to show you, okay, it's it's really easy to do this. All right, okay, I'm going to stop there. Now, now I'm sure you're tired of me clicking around. Okay, <laughs> so... If we go back to analyze, I see my 10 transforms, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and I could, uh, if I wanted to add another one, I would just say add, and I see all my previous steps, mm-hmm. okay? And I can see exactly what I've done here, right? Okay, so I can I can remember what, what happened there, okay? And now, um, now let's say let's say we're we're happy with this, okay? Um, so let's say we were happy with uh, uh, what the data looks like, and we want to export, right? So let's go and uh, and export this. Sorry, so go back to uh, export here, okay? And we get to pick the uh, we get to pick the um, the transforms that we want to mm-hmm. export, okay? So this is an easy way to say, you know, maybe I want to try. Uh, you know, maybe there's one transform here I'm not too sure about, or maybe I want to try different combinations, and you can just click and and whoops and select the ones that you want, and and then it makes it easier. Okay, okay. So here, just export everything, and now we click on the magic button, and we get the four options. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the first one is uh, a data wrangler job. Okay, which really means it's. Uh, it's a SageMaker processing job. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's maybe explain what SageMaker processing is. It's a capability of SageMaker that makes it easy to run uh, batch jobs mm-hmm. on the on managed infrastructure. And and you know, machine learning is not just training and deploying. It's uh, model uh, data preparation, uh, model evaluation, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So lots of uh, I would say peripheral mm-hmm. jobs, and uh, SageMaker processing makes it very easy. Just provide your script and where the data is and where to write the output. And we're going to see the code in a few minutes. Okay. Um, we can export to SageMaker pipelines. Mm-hmm. So we'll uh, we, we did talk about pipelines. We introduced. Yes, we introduced. introduced we pipelines. introduced this character. We told you we loved it, uh, and we'll get <laughs> back. Yeah, we'll go back to pipelines in another episode. But in a nutshell, you can build end-to-end automated, repeatable, traceable workflows. Mm-hmm. Right, all those good things. Uh, Python code is just Python code. So if you just want code uh, without, I would say, uh, SDK mm-hmm. dependencies, just code, uh, you could just go and, and run that stuff in your uh, in your own machine learning code, in your mm-hmm. own scripts. That's the one you want. And Future Store is what the name says. Um, and we'll take a quick look afterwards. Uh, we automatically generate a notebook to export um, the, our engineered features to SageMaker Feature Store, which is, guess what? Uh, <laughs> feature Store! Of feature. Sego, she's the expert, what can I say? <laughs> That's why she has a PhD. I don't. Okay? But yeah, just kidding. I, I think we might just talk about Feature Store next week, okay? That's great. But for now, let's just go and run the 
they're in a Wrangler job. Okay, fine. Okay, so I'm going to be silly and I'm going to run this one, right? Because uh, I have a pre-cooked one, but we started to do things live, so why, why not continue? If they fail, they fail, you know? Who cares? It's Friday. We love to break stuff. So, again, this is completely generated, right? Mm -mm. So, um, I don't need to do anything else. I just have to click on those cells, okay? Uh, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's get a kernel, maybe. That, that's going to help, yes. And yes, by default on uh, Studio, if you don't know what kind of uh, kernel you take, you, yeah. you take the data science. Yeah, the data science okay. kernel. Yeah, we, we, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, we, maybe there's, there's certainly room for uh, a, a very, very basic episode on, on Studio. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know. Uh, we just get excited about the, the more advanced stuff. But uh, yeah, but you feel free to ask questions if you have. Uh, simple studio questions. We we can take simple questions as well. Okay, so let's just run this. Uh, this will just import what we need. Okay, and these are some definitions. You know, where's the data set? Uh, where is our flow actually? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's still called untitled. Okay, so this is really um, this mm -hmm. uh, in JSON format. Okay. Okay, with the list of transforms mm -hmm. and the parameters, okay. and you can actually uh, you can actually edit the file. Uh, let's maybe we could take a look, right? See so, yeah, if I open this with the editor, yeah, we can see we can see the actual uh, nodes in that uh, in that graph, and we can see all the different transforms. See, drop column, one out and code, etc. So, right. so so this is very good because yeah. you could actually. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's not like a weird file that exactly, you know. Yeah. You, you, you could you could put this in Git and uh, mm -mm. and and manage it. Um, uh, you know, I know some people who would then you know edit that stuff uh, this by hand and just keep fixing it. But yeah, you could put it in Git. You could uh, open it in Studio again, and you know you could go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So it's not like oh, I do all this clicking in the UI and then mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. Well, then you get this file, it and it's kind of the it. artifact mm -hmm. that uh, traces everything. Okay. So that's pretty nice. Uh, what else? Uh, the container for yeah, SageMaker processing, some infrastructure requirements. We can just leave all this stuff by default. Uh, and the output should be CSV. Okay, so again, I didn't change anything here, right? So I'm gonna upload that flow file to S3, mm -hmm. okay? Because by now, I think you know, hopefully, <laughs> uh, all data for SageMaker is in S3. So, yeah, it needs to be in S3, and S3 is where it needs to be. So that's where <laughs> we put it. And then we can run the SageMaker processing job. And like I said, processing is a, it's a very friendly uh, service. Mm -hmm. uh, you define the input. You know, where is the, uh, what, what are the inputs for this? So here, uh, one input is the flow file mm -hmm. that we just uploaded. Uh, another input is the data set mm -hmm. here. Um, we could have uh, an Athena input, but that's not the case. Uh, we could have a Redshift input, but that's not the case, right? And then we have an output, which is uh, basically an S3 prefix where we're going to store the Stop data, the right? Okay, so I should run the cell because I think I forgot. Yes, run, run. And let's try and run this. And if it fails, I'll show you the one that I cooked earlier, <laughs> right? We've got finger crossed. Yeah, well, at least, you know, I, I get extra points for trying stuff like, <laughs> yeah? I'd like to believe that I do. <laughs> and so uh, we run this, uh, we use this processor object and um, which is really uh, saying, hey, please use uh, one M5 uh, Excel or whatever we picked, mm -hmm. and I just need one of them, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like to manage uh, EC2 instances or any infrastructure for that matter, that's perfect. Process and then you just run the job, okay? So you pass your inputs, you pass your output, and you just wait for the job to complete, right? And uh, so we'll, yeah, maybe you can switch to the other one because we don't want to wait for five minutes, but we'll, we'll check that this one worked or not. Oh, not. Right? Um, and so when you get to the end of this, after a few minutes, you have your process data in S3, okay? So let me show you the one that I've run a, minute, a few minutes ago. And it's probably a different list of transforms, right? I didn't, probably didn't tweak all of it. 
as much as we tweaked here. Um, and okay, let me get to the processing part. Okay, so yeah, we we got to the end mm -hmm. of this, and this typically runs for you know maybe five five minutes or something. And then of course we can go and we can train with this, right? Uh, so this is uh, this is uh, also also generated in the notebook. I'm gonna say it's probably not gonna work out of the box in every case uh, mm -hmm. because the the code that's here that's why it says optional. Optional means it might work or not. <laughs> um, I didn't tell you. Uh, so it, it's kind of a default example where uh, we train XJBoost uh, on linear regression uh, data, et cetera. In this case, I, I tweaked it just a bit because we're using classification. Okay, so what we basically do is we grab the path. We can see this here. Uh, we grab the path of the uh, process data, mm -hmm. right? And uh, uh, so that's if you open this file, uh, it's a little bit boring. So sh should we open it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm not no? sure. Ah, no, it's, it's not. It's not fascinating. No, it's, it's a not... CSV file. It's going to be lots of zeros and ones. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we don't want to. We don't want to look at it. But it's pretty much the original Titanic data set mm -hmm. processed according to our pipelines, right? But you can go and open it in S3 mm -hmm. if you don't believe me. <laughs> and. Uh, and we're going to this to do use this as a training input. So here again, it's a it's a basic example. It's just a training set. Of course, you would want maybe to load this and split it in training and validation. You know, do it properly, and then you can just use your SageMaker estimator uh, as always and configure a training job and set hyperparameters for uh, mm -hmm. logistic uh, regression, so class binary classification use the AUC metric and then train. And then again, we should really have a validation data set here, but I didn't have it. Okay, and we can see we're training and we get to silly high training accuracy, but that's really meaningless. I would want to look at uh, our training AUC, sorry. Uh, I, I would really want to look at uh, validation AUC, okay? So you can see this is really, uh, and even if you don't use that code, uh, really all you have to do is, uh, you know, start from there and uh, grab the uh, grab the output of your SageMaker processing job, and uh, and you can find uh, you you configure the output location mm -hmm. anyway, right? So you know where to get your uh, you know where to get your output, right? Okay, uh, I, I, let's check the other one. Because uh, did it work? Ah, it's not over. So I should keep talking for a few more minutes. Uh, okay, all right, fine. I can do that for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's it's a good example, and it's it's easy to automate. Okay. Yeah. Here it's just a notebook, and 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 we click through the cells because it's a demo. But we would really, uh, you know, we would really uh, uh, maybe we'd have a lambda function that, you know, mm. is triggered by uh, a, 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 an S3 object being written in the other mm -hmm. location, etc. Or maybe you went and and used the uh, the pipelines export, which would have the actual workflow. Let's maybe we can take a very quick look at this uh, export pipelines just to show you what it looks like. I'm not going to run this one. Okay. All right. And so we see, yeah, that's pretty much the same thing here. Okay. And we see the different steps, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, uh, we'll talk about pipelines later, but um, you define steps. So processing, training, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then you chain them and you run the pipeline, right? So here we have a processing step and um, and we have a training step, right? And then we put them together. Uh, we create a, a pipeline, and this is the important bit, right? Mm -hmm. We uh, we create the pipeline, and then we run, run the, pipeline, the pipeline, right? So that's a very good way to to automate things, right? So how am I doing on this notebook? Come on. Yeah. Uh, yes, it worked. It worked. Wow. <laughs> Live demo that worked. I should play the lottery. <laughs> lucky tonight. you, lucky you, yeah, exactly. Yes, because <laughs> we rehearsed this for about 29 seconds. Uh, all right, all right. 
that there's a bit of a story this week, but I'll spare you the story. Okay, I want to take a look at the file. Can I? Can I take a look at the file? Let's let's check okay. what you did. All right, all right. Let's take a look at the file. We have time, right? Yes. And you know, if I don't show you this, then people think I'm hiding. <laughs> so I get that feedback. Like, oh, it's all pre-cooked. Oh, no, no, no. I'm trying and I, I'm not getting it to work. Okay, okay. So let's see if we have a file or an object, sorry. So what do we have here? Ah, we have more prefixes. So I'm going to give you my magic recipe, which is this. <laughs> The famous one. Yes, and we see the CSV file. So I'm going to copy this. Oh, that's going to be a long path. Uh, export flow output. Yes. All right. Yes. And we're going to call it. Uh, Data not TSV because it has a crazy name. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and yell at me for using VI. I don't I don't really care. Okay. Yay. All right, all right. So um so yeah, live we should do more live demos. See, they work. Beautiful. Right. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Astonishing. So perfect. This is what your data looks like. And then you can even load it on your own laptop and, mm -hmm. and do whatever you want to do with it. Okay. All right. So now let's go back to this. So this worked. And uh and yeah, we could train a model and we already showed you how to do this. Okay. Um we have a few more minutes, so maybe we can um we can start quickly looking at the um um the other export options. So we looked at this one. We quickly mm. look at this one. Python. Uh, yeah, we could look at Python code. Okay, so Python code again is really exactly this. Okay, mm -hmm. it doesn't use the SageMaker SDK. You can just take this, put it in your own code, mm -hmm. and it's going to work, right? Uh, and yeah, there's quite a bit of code because I did add quite a lot of transforms. But you can just go and run this and let's go all the way to the end because that's, that's where it yeah that's where we see yeah that's where we see all the different transforms that we added right but that's why it's great to have this python generated automatically yeah. for you it's like uh, yeah it's it's nice i mean it's uh you know how, how many times you want to write uh, exactly. this or and, and of course you know you have lots you have lots of apis in scikit-learn mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and pandas and, and and you know it's not like we're we're not really inventing new transforms here, although I'm sure if you dive deep enough mm -hmm. in, in Data Wrangler, you probably you'll find some that are not as uh, straightforward mm -hmm. as they look, right? Um, but I, I think it's just great not to worry about this. I mean, I'm sure some of you love writing this code. I have to say I don't. Uh, I don't need it. You know, I, I want to get to a model and I want to, to test my model. Exactly, and, uh, and to play with my and model. Fine. And yeah, I mean, if you have a, a machine learning engineering team that loves to write the transform, that's okay. But if you're on your own, uh, if you're a one-man army, uh, that, that's a, or a one-woman army, uh, yeah, that's fine, right? You can You can do that. Or if you just want to cut the corners, right? <laughs> go fast. I, I, I'm very impatient and I love to go fast. To go fast. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's that's this bit, and we're missing one, right? Yes, we're yeah. missing feature it's store. Okay, and again, uh, we'll look at feature store um, ne uh, next week. But it's exactly what you think it is, right? It's uh, um, it's the ability to store the engineered feature, so this pretty much. Uh, if we go back to uh, to this, right, we're gonna store those rows mm -hmm. um, offline. Mm -hmm. So that's S3, right? And and we can also store them online, which is really interesting because now if we store those um, features online, we can query them really at very low latency and mm -hmm. we can inject them in prediction requests. So it means we don't have to rewrite feature engineering code mm. to reduce that prediction time, mm -mm. right? Uh, we can use exactly the same features, uh, and here it's it's a simple example, but 
uh, will try to show you something more complex for feature store. Okay. All right. Um, so as you can see, um, we we covered. Whoops, uh, we covered quite a bit of uh, of ground with uh, with Data Wrangler. Um, we saw. Uh, so we imported the data set from S3, mm -hmm. right? Um, we applied a whole bunch of uh, different transforms, and, and we honestly just just scratched the surface, right? I mean, there's uh, there's so much here. Yeah. Uh, there's so much, and, and you know, you have some 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 bigger ones, right? I mean, I I really showed you the the simple ones, but you know, outliers and uh, My managed thing. vectors. You can flatten and and build vectors, flatten them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, search and edit is actually pretty cool. Uh, ah, yes. I, I, yeah, I used it. Um, one good example of this is I came across a data set that had missing values where uh, missing values had been replaced by a question mark, ah. which is weird because mm -mm. normally you would just leave them empty, just, just like here. And so, you know, you see, oh, there's a question mark. So you can easily get rid of the question mark, say, no, replace the question mark with a, a null value. Mm -mm. And then it's very easy to drop all the lines that have a null value. Mm -mm. So yeah, this one, this, one is actually, uh, this one is actually very good. And it has a crazy number of, uh, of options. You can have regular expressions and, uh, and whatnot. So this is, uh, this is pretty nice, right? Uh, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you explore, right? Uh, yeah, you can vectorize text and don't forget you can use custom stuff. Mm -hmm. So you do this and, and you build, you build your pipeline and, um, and then you can export it in, uh, in different ways, like we saw. So, um, you know, uh, like you said, um, Let's just go and do this. Yeah, again, you can select the, the transforms and then you can export Python, um, processing job, uh, feature store, and pipelines. Pipelines. Everybody's favorite. Um, okay, and and then you can go and run this. All right. So I think it works if if you're uh, if you're experimenting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's I, as you saw, I, I really did it live uh, today uh, just to show you. There's no, you know, it's 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 quite fast. It's you know, it just works, mm -mm -mm. Um, and you can uh, you can just uh, completely uh, interactively build your uh, transforms, and still you know you get all the code and you get you know, the pipelines notebook and you mm. get the feature store notebook. So yeah. yeah, if you want to replicate and trace, and you have the flow file, which yeah. I think mm -hmm. is very important. Uh, if you want to you know if you want traceability on okay, what did I do and how do I reproduce it mm -hmm. programmatically. Uh, you can you can also do this, so it's not like oh I experimented and uh, and now oh I forgot right mm -mm -mm. which which how many times have I done yeah, this? Exactly, yeah exactly just uh, writing on piece of paper okay I did this and I did that and I and of course you always forget something <laughs> and, and, you then, lose and then something and then you have to, and then you it's like oh what what did I do to that data you know it's like uh, I'm not so sure so here you know you won't have that problem yeah, very won't have that problem okay. So well, I think this is a this is a pretty uh, a pretty thorough uh, discussion of uh, of data wrangler. Uh, so feel free uh, feel free to uh, to experiment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, and feel free to to send us feedback as well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you can always ping me or Sego on LinkedIn or anywhere. And uh, if you if you tried service if you are if you're missing something or if you really disliked something and you know, if you find something that's broken um that's fine you know you can yell at me i keep saying it's part of my job desk right yell at me on twitter or linkedin and, and you know i'm happy i'm happy when people <laughs> yell at me that's okay uh it's a good thing because they yell a lot uh all right Next week, two, within two weeks. Uh, yeah. So I think the back. the next uh, the next episode is gonna be two weeks from now, two right? Weeks from now, uh, yeah. Unless I'm mistaken. And I think we're going to discuss feature store, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. We need to double check, but we want to continue. You know, the logical progression that we had mm. uh, that we covered last week, which is really uh, you know prepare. prepare. Um, Build models, train, um, deploy, uh, debug, profile, optimize. <laughs> the list goes on, right? We have we have a lot to cover. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, so we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks uh, for uh, probably future store. And uh, yeah, I'll try to build something, uh, something bigger than this. Uh, show you how to build uh, training sets with your offline features and how to use them at prediction time online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's two weeks away, so plenty of time, right? To to build something cool, right? And uh, you'll help me, right? Sure. <laughs> With pleasure. <laughs> okay, well, I think uh, we're going to call it a day. So thank you everybody for uh, for watching this. Thank you to uh, all the colleagues involved in setting this up. And we'll see you in two weeks. And thank you, Sego. Thank you, Julia. And until then, keep rocking with machine learning. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.